We're going to continue with Chapter 3, Scientific Measurement, and we're going to move into the concept of density. Density is simply mass divided by volume. It is a ratio of the amount of matter in an object to the volume that that matter takes up. When you look at density, you can think of it as a mathematical equation, a ratio of mass to volume. But you can also think of it conceptually. It is how heavy something is for the volume that it takes up. So that is how much matter would be packed into a specific volume. So if this object has the same mass as this object, clearly it has more matter packed in less volume, so it has a greater density, while this object has a lower mass to volume ratio or a lower density. Density is independent of how much you have, because as the mass changes, the volume changes in the same ratio. So things like gold, the matter is packed very tightly. They have a high density. Air, the matter is not packed as tightly, and they have a low density. You can see from this picture uh, in the test tube, this happens to be mercury sitting on the bottom of the test tube. It has a higher density than the copper, which has a higher density than the water. When you look at density, you also need to consider the effect that temperature has on that matter. For gases and liquids, not nearly as much as gases, but when you heat them up, the volume does change, while the mass stays the same. If the volume gets larger while the mass stays the same, then the density will decrease. So for substances, especially gases, usually the temperature needs to be reported along with the density. You can see here for water, which is a liquid, at room temperature at 4 degrees Celsius, the matter is packed more tightly than it is at 20 degrees Celsius. Looking at this next picture, you can make some qualitative statements about the density. You can say that this Coke can is uh, denser, has a greater density than the water that it is floating in, if this is water. This bowling ball has a lower density than this bowling ball and a lower density than the water. You're not sure about the differences in density between the Coke can and the silver bowling ball. One could be more or less dense than the other, but right now we simply know that they're both more dense than the water that surrounds them. You're going to be solving some mathematical calculations with density. The basic density equation will be manipulated to solve for both volume, excuse me, volume and mass. And again, these are just algebraic manipulations that will allow you to solve for the other variables. We will also use density in graphing when we conduct a lab of an unknown substance. When you graph the mass of an object versus its volume, and let's say you have several data points, and you graph your line, the slope of this line the change in the y value over the change in the x value will give you the slope of this line. And the slope will be the change in the m value over the change in the v value, which will be your density. So you can find the slope of the line, and that slope of the line will represent the density of that object. There are two types of measurements that you will be making in chemistry. One is quantitative, which again uses usually an instrument and a measuring device, and there will be numbers. Okay. So quantitative measurements have numbers. You'll simply be reporting uh, 2.00 grams, 1.85 milliliters, etc. Okay, quantitative, quantity. The other type of measurement is qualitative. This would be color, 
um, states of matter such as gases being formed, describing the reaction taking place. So quantitative measurements using your uh, equipment and your qualitative measurements using your senses. When you make your quantitative measurements, each measurement that you make has two parts. It has a number, 3.00, and it has a unit, grams. We've already discussed both of these parts are necessary for a complete measurement. Simply writing 3 doesn't tell us what we are measuring. Grams tells us that we are measuring mass, so we need to make sure we put a unit. The international system of units is what we'll be using, and here it is based on the metric system. It consists of a prefix, which tells you the size of the unit, and then the base unit itself. So, for example, if I write ms, this is the base unit. That's second. That tells me what I'm measuring. I'm measuring time. This, milli, tells me the size of this base unit that I am measuring. Milli meaning one one thousandth, so millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. You will need to become familiar with the SI units. You already are familiar with most of them. If you're measuring length, the base unit is the meter and the symbol is a lowercase m. Mass, the base unit, is actually the kilogram. It's the only base unit that actually has a prefix. Again, kilo is going to be a lowercase k and then gram. Time is the second, lowercase s. Temperature, we will be reading degrees Celsius off of our thermometers, but the actual SI unit for temperature is Kelvin and that's an uppercase K, and that's a calculated value that you will use as you move through chemistry. The amount of substance in chemistry is called the mole, and the symbol for mole is M-O-L. Energy, the joule, uppercase J, and pressure is the Pascal, and again, uppercase P with a lowercase a. So these are the symbols for these units that you will be using. You'll also be using some derived units. So if area is length squared, then taking the SI unit for length, meter, and squaring it gives us area. Volume is cubic meters. Okay, It's also uh, cubic centimeters and milliliters. So when you look at density, you can have many different mass values and different volume values. But all of these are mass to volume units. There are some helpful, useful volume units that it's nice to know. One milliliter is equivalent to one cubic centimeter. Twenty drops is approximately equal to a milliliter and one liter is a thousand milliliters. You also, of course, are going to be uh, needing to be familiar with the actual prefixes. And you're not going to have to know all of them. These are the only prefixes that I really care about you knowing and working with. They're the ones we work with consistently in chemistry. Mega means a million. Okay? So again, that's one times ten to the sixth of the base unit. Kilo means a thousand of the base units. Centi is one one hundredth or ten to the negative two power. Milli is one one thousandth or ten to the negative three power. Micro, which is this little symbol here, the symbol has a name called mu. The symbol sort of looks like a long leg and then a short leg u. Mu means one one millionth, so micro, again a micrometer, would be one one millionth or ten to the negative sixth of a meter, and then nano is one one billionth, so a nanometer is ten to the negative nine meters or ten to the negative nine grams or whatever you happen to be measuring. So I guarantee you with time you will be quite familiar 
with these sizes and prefixes. Once we get into lab, we certainly will practice um, our skills with volume reading, especially the graduated cylinders. Okay. Beakers are not measuring devices, they're containing devices. Your Erlenmeyer flasks are not measuring devices, they're containment devices. The only device that you will measure volume with is a graduated cylinder. So we'll work on our skills with graduated cylinders. We also primarily will be using the electronic balance for honors chemistry to measure mass. And again, once you get the skill and the technique down, the balance does most of the work for you. But you don't want to think that this is any better than the triple beam balances that you've used. The instrument still has to make an estimate in that last measurement. The electronic balance is more expensive because it's a lot faster. It's not really any better than the old triple beam balances. So this completes the section on and the whole chapter on measuring. So at this point you should feel comfortable with all of the topics. Ask in class if you're not.